How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Careers Process. As you know, my name is Jaden, and right next to me I have Tash. How are we doing today? I'm very well, how are you? That's good, and I'm going well, thank you. I want to first of all say a huge thank you for taking the time. Well, first of all, we just did a photo shoot today, so thank you so much for taking that time. Thank and you for shooting me. Oh, Not in that way, but... Oh, oh yeah, no, it's, a, <laughs> it, it's always an interesting, and to be honest, like I, I think I've gotten used to saying like when I'm talking to people who don't know what I do and I'm like, oh yeah, I just shot this person and all that and everyone's like, excuse Wait me, what did, you, what did you do? And I'm like, oh, I'm a photographer and they're like, oh, I gotcha. But yeah, no, it's always a... It's always Look, we're like, not in just... the US, so it's different. <laughs> Yes. Sorry, anyone I'm so, who's sorry. From the US, yeah, sorry about sorry. that. Um, <laughs> and uh, but yeah, thank you for taking the time as well to come onto the channel and talk about what you do mm. when it comes to creative arts. I really appreciate it. Pleasure is all mine. That's good. And so for everyone watching at home, tell us what do you do with yourself when it comes to the creative arts? Uh, basically, I'm an MC, I'm a singer, I host a lot of burlesque, uh, write my own cabaret shows, um, write my own songs, uh, I do a lot of improv, so improv, uh, musical comedy kind of stuff, uh, and also used to, but don't anymore, used to have a podcast uh, as well. So basically oh. everything, um, because that's the way you make money in this industry is by having your finger in as many pies as possible yeah. so that when the pies don't exist anymore, mm. then at least you've got something <laughs> to still do. <laughs> You, I, so you're not afraid to do a mixture of things and to explore into different areas of the creative arts. Yeah, definitely. And, and um, so, what, like, if you don't mind me asking, because you said you did a podcast, is it just? Uh, do you still do it now, or just it's no longer? Well, the person that I did it with, uh, Miss Betty Bombshell, who uh, was Miss Burlesque Australia the year before mm. this. I don't know. She's had it for ages because of COVID. Uh, anyway, uh, Betty and I uh, during COVID got separated. She ended up moving to WA, and as you know, uh, uh, for us here in Victoria, going to WA and vice versa has been pretty tough over the last two years. Fair enough. So we did try to do it online, like via Zoom and that kind of thing, uh, but it just. The whole thing was about, um, you know, just talking about like performers and talking about how they got it. Similar sort of vibe to this, um, but interviewing, uh, you know, different friends of ours and asking like what their best and worst experiences were and that kind of okay. thing. And um, it was pretty fun, but it kind of got a little bit depressing during COVID because, you know, she was free and me and everyone else uh, was kind yeah, of like sitting the here rest depressed. Of yeah. Melbourne so, was just crying and I'm huddled in a ball, just going, "Why is this happening to why me? Why can you go more than five kilometers away?" Um, <laughs> Uh, oh, so gosh. yeah, but I, hopefully she's moving back to Melbourne and hopefully we'll get it started again. Um, oh, it was yeah. a great fun time. We had a wine sponsor at one point, so we'd just wow. get people drunk and feed them cheese <laughs> and then just find out their secrets. It was great. Um, Amazing. <laughs> it's always good to have sponsors as well for what you do. And exactly. That's incredible. And so I guess, how long ago did you start um, exploring into, because you said as an MC uh, host, someone who does cabaret and produces performances. How long ago did you start doing that? Um, I probably started in like 2014. That was when I wrote my first solo cabaret show. And I had always done like singing and stuff for burlesque performances. And I used to be in a, like a vintage trio. We did like Andrew Sisters kind of style things. And so I kind of was introduced to the burlesque world through the rockabilly pinup sort of people. And yep. um, then I sort of didn't really start like pursuing it properly until yeah probably 2014 yeah. when I wrote my first cabaret show. Amazing. Yeah. What was I guess the trigger for it? Like what what made you want to get into um, uh, producing cabaret shows and I into this area? I don't think I really like um, decided. It kind of found me if that made sense. Like we mm. did a I went to the con um, studied musical theatre in um, Queensland and uh, I realised by the end of that course I really hate musical theatre and so <laughs> I was like cool I have a musical theatre degree great. Uh, and so I still really loved singing and I really loved storytelling um, but cabaret was kind of a medium of doing both of those things um, without okay. having yeah. to fit into other people's ideas of what you're supposed to look like or sound like or you know represent and so that was the reason why it was attractive to me because yeah. although it was scary as hell uh, it was like cool I've got this freedom to express myself in the way that I want to amazing and yeah I think that's one of the great things about like you know burlesque cabaret and all that sort of thing there's 
no limitation of what you can and can't do and yeah. it can you know you can be taken in one direction and then suddenly it can be take you you just go on a completely different direction you're just like oh gosh where am i going with this you know yeah and I that's think, me with my life all the time <laughs> <laughs> i mean i think that might have been everyone's in the last couple of years of just yeah. not knowing what's going on <laughs> what are we doing <laughs> <laughs> i love it and because like i think the for me like what i when I came across your work was at uh, your hosting for Netflix and Chill Cabaret, which recently just happened. Gosh, when was it? that? Was a like a month few... ago now? Gosh, that time has gone very quickly. It's hasn't gone it? so quick. <laughs> and, it's amazing uh, how quick time goes when you're not sitting in your house. It's oh, great, I know. Like... Yeah, I know. It's great. Isn't it? <laughs> and um, and I absolutely loved like your hosting style was great. Like you really knew how to connect with the audience as well. Yeah. And you did this amazing uh, Squid Games dedication, <laughs> which was absolutely amazing. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, like, has being a host, is that something you've always thought that you were going to get into? Or was it, uh, like, what was the reason why you started hosting? Um, again, it was about that, like, diversifying sort of stuff. Uh, and then... It was actually Betty, Betty Bombshell again. She had the After Hours Cabaret Club and they wanted to put it together but they didn't have a host and they, her and my friend Dakota Garrett, uh, they were like, you should be a host. And I was like, mm, I don't know. Like I kind of had done it a little bit for like some burlesque nights and that kind of thing. But I was really like, I just want to write my like one hour cabaret shows and change the world. You know, mm. I was very like dedicated and focused on that. Um, and then I started doing it for those two because I love them. They're both like very dear friends of mine. Mm. And then I just loved it. I was like, I'm the person who's like in control of the whole party. I'm the vibe. I'm the one that's making sure that the performer feels comfortable, that the energy is correct for what they're about to present. Mm -hmm. And then I get to just like throw in a song here or there, you know, to yeah. kind of like remind people that I'm a singer. Um, and yeah. it really helps you, I guess, with your like comedy chops and your improvisation. And it really helped my cabaret as well because I was less about trying to write things and writing a structure and making sure that it all made sense. I was, I was more in the moment and mm. you know feeding off that energy and kind yeah. of making it more conversational which realistically like original cabaret actually was that so um, wow. it kind of yeah it was kind of a weird full circle moment and also just hosting like it's such a um, you know I don't have to produce it um, <laughs> so I can just rock up and just be like the center of attention and then be <laughs> in the middle of a poster and not have to do any of that work it's like amazing for my narcissism so, you know, <laughs> it's a good time yeah, uh, yeah. I guess and as you said you would be practicing your because as a host you know obviously you have to prepare yourself for whatever happens like as you know when you think as as a performer you do your performance you go on stage and then obviously if you have to if you make a mistake you you have to improv it and then you leave stage yeah. but then as a host you kind of have to prepare for all these different possibilities so i can Definitely. imagine that you would have to that you had to practice your improv skills quite well where like you go okay if this happens if i have to deal with someone in the crowd if i'm looking at people in the audience going all right who who am i going to pick on today or something oh like that. definitely <laughs> yeah always uh i i've got contacts in now but i normally wear glasses and um when i first started i never used to wear contacts or glasses and i would oh, always no. i would always choose like the drunkest stupidest person to go near in the world and so then um my friends were like okay we're gonna get like the stage kitty to choose the person for your thing because you always choose like the rowdiest like oh, hardest no. order supporting <laughs> people because like what are you doing over there? And they're like, don't go near that person. Don't, don't. They've been annoying all night. They've been yelling. But I don't know. I kind of love dealing with the rowdiest person in the room because mm. it's like, if I if I can get them under control, then like everyone else is going to, you know, I shouldn't say like, behave, effect. but yeah. like everyone's going to have a good time because if that person's on board, then everyone yeah. else should fall into line after that. So, yeah. um, you know, and people are rowdy for a number of reasons. Like sometimes they just want a little bit of attention and once they get it, then they shut up. So it's kind yeah. of a good thing sometimes to just go okay what do you want or ignore them mm. completely so then they like you know realize that they're not the center of attention yeah. it's like you're not getting paid hi hi you paid to be here do you want to enjoy <laughs> it right thank you so much thank you thank you um so i kind of yeah. i don't mind being um I don't mind being the person that maybe one or two people hate if it means my performers are going to have a nicer time on stage okay. and not be, you know, interrupted or people yeah. yelling or people talking through their performance or whatever. Mm. I'm happy to be the, like, 
angry mum to be not in, and I always do it in a fun like charming yeah. way but I just think you know like there's certain etiquettes that happen in a, in a theatre space um, and so if people aren't doing it then I'll get them so <laughs> yeah, I, I love that you have that like mothering instincts of looking after your performers when always. they're you know you're hosting an event going all right I need to make sure that obviously they're protected that they're well looked after that you know obviously when you know if something does happen that you know I guess I want it to follow me instead of them, you know, and I think that's pretty, very noble of you to be doing that, and I think, you know, I mean, that's... there's like, especially in the burlesque space, like, there's people literally being, you know, half naked on stage, and we understand that as artists, as mm. art, but some people don't understand that oh, as art, no. <laughs> and, you know, when people are, you know, like, picking up, like, clothing off the ground and sniffing it, or, you know, oh, like, people oh. trying to, like, slap people on the ass, or, you know, do any uh. of that sort of stuff, like, I hate that, so... I just make sure that, you know, my, yeah. my girls, my boys, my theys, my thems are all protected um, yeah. and that, you know, that all their stuff comes back to them because of they spend course. so much time and so much money on those costumes and mm. they never wash them, so don't take them. Anyway, uh, and, so, and, and you know, I, I just would hate that, that, you know, they've spent all this time rhinestoning this glove and someone just takes it home because they oh, think it's pretty, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, absolutely. So that never happens on my watch. Uh, but I love it's, that. Yeah, it's just, Great. yeah, it's community you know um, mm. and if everyone's being lifted up then the host is doing a good job it's not about me being the center of attention because then that would just be coming to one of my shows and that's mm. not what it's about it's a variety show so yeah, yeah. absolutely and I think it's um, yeah because like uh, the amount of times I've talked to performers where I've talked about costumes and all that sort of thing they're not cheap to make and no. all that sort of thing and you know like I've even um, you know, I think it's good that you're looking out for that, going like, all right, you know, all right, I need to make sure that they get their clothing back, that they get all that back, because, you know, as you know, by getting your own costumes, it's not cheap. And once nope. they're gone, you can't really replace it at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. If it's made out of a particular material or the same rhinestones mm. or, you know, like it's very intricate. Um, expensive like kind of oh, work yeah. that these amazing performers do so um, yeah. and yeah and a lot of the time you know we don't have much money so to try and get it replaced it's Absolutely. probably worth more than the gig you're actually seeing um, that we're exactly getting paid it. for at the time so don't steal people's stuff okay? oh absolutely just don't steal in general <laughs> don't do it or I'll find you I'll be at the end of your bed no I'm kidding um, Tash York will, will come after you I will find you <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess ask, talking about your, so some of your personas that you've created on stage, like um, as we were talking before you, like the persona that you have right now is absolutely, first of all, the makeup and the rhinestone is absolutely amazing and all that. So how do you come up with some of your looks and your personas for I think um, I definitely over lockdown like got a lot more into drag makeup. I was always really into like theatrics and glamour and all that kind of thing. But I was more from like a music theatre place for so long. So it was yeah. kind of like theatre makeup. And over the years, you know, as I've got, I guess, grown more alternative and, you know, lent into a lot more of that sort of like pin up kind of style yeah. and hung out with more burlesque people and, you know, realised my own like queerness and that kind of thing. I think it's all kind of fed into the different sort of things that influence me as a person mm. and over lockdown I really sort of went from just really dramatic makeup to like full-on drag makeup yeah, um, because yeah. um, I've always really been into like that scene I have a lot of like really close friends that are drag queens um, and it just gives you I don't know so many more tools to play with mm. and um, I think it as a host as well like it kind of I don't know drag queens as a host is kind of a thing that people are used to as mm. well and so I find sometimes you know uh, when I ho I do like corporate hosting and stuff as well, and I you know obviously can't be a drag queen when I'm doing no, corporate yeah, hosting, yeah, yeah. but it's an interesting dynamic that like you get a lot of like respect automatically like when you're sort of dressed in a certain way and mm -hmm. have that kind of amount of you know when when you have seven kilos of makeup on people respect you more. No, I'm kidding. Um, but I'm saying that's a lot of, that's it's, a lot of makeup. It's like you know you've got that. It's almost like a mask, I guess. Like and people like respect you for that, whereas automatically. And I wonder. I sometimes wonder whether that comes from the fact that people uh, you know have seen drag queens before and they are very you know they're usually really quick and they're usually really savvy and you know you don't want to like get in trouble with a drag queen because you're like oh god they're gonna get me kind of thing and they're gonna come like, after you they're gonna come which I feel like I've always had like I've always uh, had that idea of that like I'm in control of the room don't touch my performers don't take photos of people yeah. don't you know like try and sneak your friends into the theatre you know like I'm very oh, yeah I've seen it all uh, wow. you know um, I've never heard of that last one yeah so don't try and think 
finger your wife in the audience <laughs> while we're doing a show. Yeah. Wait, no. what? Yeah. That's happened? Yeah, and then I kicked them out and then he spat on the stage. It was really cute. Oh, what? I... Pre-COVID times, love it. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Adelaide Fringe, it's a wild place at 11.30pm show, I'll tell you what. Oh my <laughs> gosh, I've never heard of that. I've That's... seen it all. Um, you have seen it all. Maybe not yet, but nearly. Oh. Uh, but um, yeah, so I think the drag sort of stuff came out as like a, yeah, an extra, I guess, element um a layer and it's just fun like it just like, yeah, yeah. brings like so many different you know costumes and things together that i've always like dreamed of or looked at yeah. and thought it was so cool and now i've kind of like got a bit more access to it and you know it's not that expensive like once you've got the stuff like you can create so many different looks. oh yeah and so you know it's not like a piece of clothing where it's like you've worn that you've had a photo and that that's the end it's like i can continuously keep changing yeah. what's going on with my face and it's not mm. that much money like well, it is once at the beginning. Oh, yeah, at course, the beginning, yeah. but then once you've got it, it lasts ages. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. And yeah. like, it still amazes me to this day. Like, I've seen so you know with what people can do with just makeup and all mm. that sort of thing. It's like I the the what you can do is endless. Like, I feel like you can go on and on, and you will still see something different. And yeah, I think forever. that's one of the yeah. cool things that I th I really respect and appreciate about like a lot of performers how they're able to turn and create these amazing looks and I'm just like oh my gosh how the hell you know what I mean yeah it's a, like it's, it's art though you know oh, what I mean it's like form in itself the, yeah. they don't call it a paint for nothing like you're painting like mm. your face and the way it needs to be like I've glued yeah. down my eyebrows and drawn them up a little bit higher like mm. you completely you know especially wigs and like you know oh. big jewelry and all that sort of stuff it's like such a fantasy you know it's just like a really heightened version of yourself which is yeah. just like everyone loves a dress up party it's just my life oh, is that yeah. all the time it's great <laughs> gosh that would be amazing <laughs> it's so fun you can do it anyone can do it yeah I've got some spare weeks let's go oh thank you I'll, I'll, I'll remember that for next time good I'll bring that <laughs> <laughs> amazing and I guess you know as so as a final question I'd love to ask so people who um, you know who are watching uh, today's episode you know who are interested in either getting into the cabaret blessed scene wanting to get into emceeing and all that what would you say is the best advice you would give to people about um I would this? say like go and see a bunch of stuff so that you mm -hmm. know like what you what you want to be or where you fit in the world or what might be lacking um and I would say also like improv improv if you want to be an MC improv is your best friend go and do some improv classes there's some amazing um, places all around Australia um, but in Melbourne you know there's the improv conspiracy um, there's also improv tunes which is an audition only but it's like a music slash improvised theater like group which is pretty awesome but they do run courses from time to time um, the big hoo-ha um, I think like a lot of a lot of what I do has come from my background in improv and a lot of um, yeah, I think a lot of the stuff that makes it more enjoyable for me is because I'm like, I can deal with anything. And so it doesn't, you know, a lot of people get like really nervous or worried, you know, of big lineup shows and stuff. But I just think if you're, yeah, just really open and honest and wanting to like connect with the performers and connect with your audience, it becomes a whole lot easier from there. So, yeah. yeah. Amazing. And, you know, like it's, uh, I love that, as you said at the start, you know, go and see shows and all that sort of thing to give an idea of like, what you know what is seen what is hasn't been done before and all that sort of thing because it's all about as well being different being unique and, yeah you know, i think you know that's always a very important thing and you know to have an understanding of like so i know that sometimes i've even talked to people who said they want to do something and then i've been like okay have you looked into this and they're like oh, no not really and you're kind of like well that's the first thing you need to do because for you because as you said like you need to have an understanding before you jump into it to Definitely. make sure that you, this is actually what you want to do. Oh, yeah. 100%. You've got to know you want to do it. <laughs> like exactly. It could seem good to be, you know, the center of attention and the host and whatnot, but, like, there are a lot of responsibilities with it oh. as well. And, you know, making sure, you know, you get... Uh, place names right and you know sponsorships if that's required or you know plugging certain things for other people's shows pronouns making sure that the audience is safe making sure the costumes come back making sure that you know if the, the microphones are the right side of the stage to make sure the next thing's happening looking at the stage seeing if there's any water on there and going actually I need to talk while that gets cleaned up like there's mm. a lot of stuff that's quite stressful about being a host um, and a lot of people don't you know kind of recognize so sorry to just like list the worst parts about it it's no that's okay uh, that's <laughs> It's really good um but you know it, it's um yeah it's like definitely with great power comes great responsibility and <laughs> and it's very much that sometimes as well so i'm um, yeah amazing
great advice. I 100% agree with you. Mm. And I want to say, first of all, once again, thank you for taking the time once again to come onto the channel. I really do appreciate it, Tash. Thanks thank you. For thank, you. Me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's okay. <laughs> My pleasure. And so, for everyone watching at home, thank you so much for tuning into another episode of the Creators Process. If you want to t check out Tash York's amazing. Uh, work uh, click the links down below. I'll leave links to everything if uh, she is performing in your area Please go and see her. She's an incredible MC. She does amazing shows. Yeah, you will not be disappointed. Absolutely phenomenal so I Thanks, yeah man. would <laughs> definitely strongly keep going, encourage no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as I keep saying let's keep supporting our amazing community go to shows support performers purchase merchandise uh, hire photographers hire artists let's just keep supporting our amazing community yeah let's just keep it going and yes absolutely it's we have the power to help support each other's dreams and support each other's goals absolutely. and uh, comment like and subscribe and I will see you in the next episode bye